Yes, so I'm going to present a work that is actually ongoing and is um, a working group within the Confederation of Open Access Repositories, CoR. And um, it's uh, essentially a working group that is developing, developing controlled vocabularies. By controlled vocabularies, in this case, I'm not talking about subject vocabularies, but simply list or taxonomies, if you want to call it like that, um, about resources, um, licensing, um, rights, etc. Well, I'm going to explain a bit more what this working group is doing and how is this fitting into the CoR um, framework for enhancing interoperability within its, um, its network. But uh, the use case that I'm going to talk about is FIDRA International, which is the permanent hosting, archiving, and indexing of digital resources and assets, which is in the University of Vienna. And um, this is a partnership between 14 institutions that are providing resources to uh, several um, consortia and networks, like for instance, Europeana, Open Air, or Open Library, etc. And they want to enhance the, the production, let's say, of the metadata that they are submitting. And they want to be more link open data oriented. And uh, this is the reason why they are evaluating the possibility to use um, the vocabularies that CoR is developing because they are actually, they are link open data already. So um, just to talk a bit more about the CoR working group on control vocabularies, we are around, um, I think we are around 12 people and from um, Europe and also from Asia and Latin America. And essentially what will happen is that we got something which was called InfoE Repo, which was a vocabulary, a set of vocabularies developed in an old project that was called Driver, funded by the European Commission. And they are, these vocabularies are simply obsolete and need a, need, needed a revision. And uh, the Driver, or those that inherited these vocabularies gave to CoA the responsibility to move it forward. And this is the reason why this, voca this working group um, um, was set up. So um, essentially what is important is, what is important is that um, we have at the moment five vocabularies, which is type of resources, license, access, version, data type. At the moment, the one that is available is the type of resources. And we are using, um, 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 I got a lapsus now, what's the name? Oh, <laughs> ESCOS XL, sorry. For uh, modeling the, the vocabulary, we are plus trans, uh, translating the vocabularies into all the languages that are available in the working group. So we have the vocabularies translated in Japanese, Spanish, Catalan, um, Dutch, etc. And they are published in IDF and um, available um, in uh, our server in the University of Tor Vergata, hosted by the Food and Agriculture Organization. I don't know how, how, how many of you are familiar with the technologies behind uh, the, the vocabularies, the production of vocabularies, uh, ESCOS XL, so um, um, publishing in RDF and uh, in different versions, etc. But um, at the end of the day, adding linkages to other vocabularies, what we produced here is a link open data set that is helping the repositories that are in the CoR network to produce since the beginning data that is already link open data in a very, in a quite straightforward way. So um, this is very helpful for service providers because when they receive the data, they have plenty of linkages already and they can identify the content of a specific tag or metadata through this um, URIs and linkages to several vocabularies. Um, so what more can I say I mean, um, about the core control vocabularies um, working group? We are hoping to get all the vocabularies published by autumn. So um, as I mentioned, at the moment, we have types of resources available. 
And again, what we hope is to translate it into different languages and to make it available using RDF. Uh, why it's so important for CoR the translation into different languages? Essentially, CoR is an international organization or initiative with a big presence from um, Latin America, and um, particularly Brazil and all the, so the Portuguese, Spanish are two important languages, and they usually are out. Uh, they cannot use these vocabularies because they are English-oriented. Plus, um, the info you repo was using URIs that had the string of the label applying to a particular uh, resource instead of using uh, alphanumeric uh, characters. So this has, has made very difficult the process of adoption and therefore this translation and to make it more um, um, a model easier to simply be used by different institutions in the network is uh, paying off right now. Um, why the use case for FIDRISE? I mentioned they are providing um, sources to different um, service providers and for them it's extremely important to maximize and to uh, make it as much as uh, straightforward as possible this process because it cost, costs a lot of money. So what they did was essentially they um, went to FAO, to my unit, where we have a set of good practices for publishing um, link open data for publications, and which is essentially something that's called LoDVD. And what LoDVD is saying is that you can use the metadata encoding that you wish, but you have to use metadata encoding that big service providers can understand. And what we did was a kind of mapping so, uh, the, so if you want to use title, the recommendation is that you have to use anything that is coming from Dublin Core. If you want to use another specific metadata, we, we suggested to use Bebo if it's not in Dublin Core, etc. The idea is simply uh, to help um, um, data providers to supply as much um, data useful for service providers as possible. I'm not going to go through that. There is. Um, um, long explanation in the paper is simply to mention that the reason why FIDRA is in here with CoR is because of these particular good practices from FAO. And in this context, what FAO is also recommending is to use RDF and control vocabularies using this particular modeling um, from W3C. So um, what they have now is uh, started a phase in FIDRA where they are preparing an infrastructure to use not only the vocabularies that are coming from CoR, but also some other vocabularies like Eurovoc, Agrovoc, which is also coming from FAO, UNESCO, etc. So um, they are uh, adding these vocabularies into their own system using ESCOS core formats, and they are using tools like ESCOSMOS for visualizing these vocabularies and to um, include and or to make easier the consumption of these vocabularies in the metadata production, and uh, also having a sparkle endpoints for providing access to this data for service providers, etc. So um, here, what is important simply to highlight that the work that CoR is doing in terms of control vocabularies has an impact into this big, uh, well, in any kind of institution that has repositories and they want to share this, um, this metadata in a way that can be meaningful for the community and simply not stay hidden um, out there. So other things that I can mention is that the idea of CoR is to um, go ahead with uh, this idea of, um, let's say, um, using the, um, the link open data principles for supplying these uh, control vocabularies. Um, this is a graphic, which is, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but this is the infrastructure that we have right now, um, which is, um, the editor for these vocabularies, core vocabularies, which is called Vogbench, and it's essentially an editor that can um, or <coughs> helps uh, people around the world to edit at the same time in um, uh, the same vocabulary. 
in a kind of uh, easy way. This is export as S codes and it's included in a heat hub. And then um, we don't know yet OpenAir or Univi will uh, support this in um, providing uh, better services for accessing to the um, link open data infrastructure behind. At the moment, this is supported by FAO, but um, has to be moved to another partner in the, cons in the, um, in the core network. And then um, the last point is to offer through the Perl.org and a web browser uh, the linkages and uh, information about the vocabularies. What we are doing right now is, and actually there is already um, an, a plugin um, for those that are familiar with ePrints from the University of Southampton. They have already integrated this vocabulary, so it's going to be extremely transparent for managers and institutions that they decide to use uh, ePrints. And uh, there is also an ongoing um, um, testing with this space to also provide uh, these vocabularies in the standalone um, um, uh, software that uh, this space is providing. There is uh, next week the Open Repositories um, conference. There, the, the coordinator of this working group is going to have um, um, a talk in the main uh, plenary, so in trying to also um, make to understand to the, 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 the software producers in the context of open repositories, how important it is to use control vocabularies, and how important it would be to use link open data principles when data is exchanged, um, for instance, through OI image. I mean, we could even simply um, exchange um, this lot um, using the URIs, integrating the URIs in uh, XML. And, um, and that's it. Uh, here there are some resources that probably you cannot see very well because there are two lights, but in any case, we will have access to the presentation, I presume. And um, if you have any questions, you can also write to us, to the working group, or you can ask me during the, um, today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hima. Um, questions or remarks from the room? Thank you very much for, for the talk and look forward to the release uh, in a few months, you said, if I'm not mistaken. There is one that is already released, which okay. is the type of resources. Okay. The one you mentioned about testing with the DSpace yeah. in the end, um, is that available to the study, the, the sort of like the testing, was it co completely compatible or? Uh, yeah, well this has been done, the difference between ePrints and DSpace is that ePrints has been done directly by the University of Southampton, while this space has been done um, by the University of Mignon. So what we have used is the version that Mignon is having now. So this is the reason why it's so important next week to talk to Tim, Donahue, all the people from this space, and to tell them that this testing is done, works, and that we would like to test it with the original standalone. Um, and this should be done by this space, actually. Okay, so, so you, it's in the works now, soon to be done to? Yeah, because the, the, it, it works, so the vocabularies can be implemented. The point is how to do it. For ePrints, we know that we can use an app, or I don't remember how it's called in ePrints, but to put it in the bazaar, and then somebody can decide or not to use the vocabularies. In this space, we have to decide how to do that because it would be more integrated than in the case of ePrints. So, um, but let's say that the testing so far was good. So, Negotiation even, happens next week. Yeah, yeah. so okay. this space, in a way or another, supports a lot, yeah. Thank you. Any other question to Ima? Can I just follow up to your question then? Uh, to be frank or honest, I'm completely external to this field. I don't know this field at all. So what could help me to understand better uh, uh, the the rationale behind all this work around controlled vocabularies would be to see, for example, an example of implementation 
I saw that you had several links in your presentation. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to see just one, for example, on the ePrint server? Is it uh, live and or a anywhere else? <laughs> uh, no. Um, it could help me, but maybe uh, other people in the room to see how it is implemented and well, used. Well, to implement it simply, you would be you, you have your publication okay. and you go to your institutional repository mm -hmm. and you have to upload the documents. Okay. And you have different metadata, uh, well, met different fields that you have to fill. Mm -hmm. Some of them are blankets, so you can introduce the information directly by yourself. And others, you have, uh, there are uh, lists. Okay. So the point is, are these lists. Mm -hmm. What we are going to improve in this, with this, is that the lists are going to be the same for you than somebody uh, mm -hmm. in okay. uh, Embrapa in Sao Paulo. Simply that he's going to use the translation in Portuguese and you are going to trans use the translation into French. So when you select that, you are adding into the system, the system a URI plus the label, mm. so that the text. So when then the, man the managers are exposing this data for, to, to base, for instance, or even Google Scholar or whatever, what they are showing to the service providers is the URI plus yeah. the label. So when they get the URI, the service providers, they can start building on the top of that. Because even if they don't have this particular label in their systems, they can go there, they can see what means exactly, and then they, if there are linkages because you are using link open data, so you are linking to DVpedia or you are linking to mm. another vocabulary, they can use these mapping things to understand how, how they could use this, this information. This is relevant, for instance, for, t um, for resources, because in the case of the base database in Bielefeld, they are struggling a lot because somebody is, selling, um, is sending information that one must call a monograph, another one calls the publication book, book. Yeah. Mm. another call it whatever. So with this vocabulary, what we are keeping track as well of synonyms, we are keeping track of of different elements to enrich the vocabulary. So you mentioned uh, Google Scholar. Uh, yeah. Do you uh, do you know exactly how Google Scholar exploit or, or do, don't ex doesn't exploit this? No, I mean, no, I don't think that they are going to use. The, no, they, oh, I don't it's know. It's a black box. We don't know exactly, right? I don't know how how. European. I address. mean, in my case, the data when we expose the data in FAO, we add our vocabulary. It is very specific in its link open data already, mm. but. I don't know if they are using it. Yeah. But this is, this is important for um, uh, service providers, um, particularly um, base is one, but we have a big one, okay. a very big data prov uh, service provider in agriculture. That is fantastic if this is um, implemented and is one of the reasons why FAO is supporting CoR because we need people using these vocabularies in order to make easier to find these resources on the web mm. afterwards and to, to, to play with them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.